giant Tata Steel is taking the first step today as far as severing its ties with the United Kingdom goes. The company will begin the formal sale process for its loss-making units in the United Kingdom. And though the Tatas have not yet set a time frame for such a sale, Tata Steel could announce a deal to sell its long product business, including the Scunthorpe Steel plant to Greybull Capital. That is a move expected later today. Kritika Saxena now joining us with that story. So Kritika, we understand this, sell, this sale could fetch Tata Steel as much as 400 million pounds and uh, it could be signed as early as today? Absolutely. So let me talk about this Kunthorpe and Grable's uh, deal. Essentially, Tata Steel has been in conversation with PE joint uh, Grable's Capital to sell its entire Scunthorpe plant. Uh, the valuation is still very unclear, but what we understand is that the 400 million pound, uh, that is a market estimate, will include the entire pension liability, will include uh, Scunthorpe Steelworks, uh, some mills in Teesside and north of France, and some engineering workshops in Workington. So it's going to be a consolidated deal which net net will fetch 400 million pounds so the 400 amount that is being estimated is not necessarily a, a one-time payment that Tata Steel will get in fact it's very unclear if at all Tata Steel will get any amount given the kind of debt that is there on the Scunthorpe uh, plant books it could be a very marginal amount in terms of profits that will uh, come in but over and above that uh, remember Tata Steel uh, Tata Steel has been in conversation to sell this entire business this has been lobbied by the UK government as well Overall, once the deal is done, it will give some confidence uh, to the government with respect to a clean uh, stake sale going through. But it all hinges on if uh, the employees are assured uh, that uh, they will have their jobs once Grable takes over. It depends on what the turnaround plan is and it depends upon what assurance Grable's capital has given to the UK government. Now, as you said, the overall stake sale process has started today. And what we understand from our sources is that uh, for now, Tata Steel will invite express of interest and over the course of the next few weeks they will uh, study all prospective buyers the due diligence is still underway so it is unlikely that financial bids will come in anytime soon remember Scunthorpe is just a part of their business there are several other businesses then the largest portion of the UK business is the Port Talbot plant which is expected to bring in the largest amount so uh, stay tuned we are expecting to get the announcement anytime now this is Good news what um, is being announced today, um, that Tata is um, announcing that the sale will go ahead subject to contract, essentially. So I think that's a positive uh, move. Uh, obviously, there's details still to be achieved. Um, but from the town's point of view and from the community's point of view, it's very good to know that um, there's going to be a future for steel in our area. Well, we were talking about a deal being announced and there is an important statement that has come in by Tata Steel. Tata Steel has confirmed that they have appointed uh, KPMG as the advisor for the sale of its United Kingdom operations. So they have confirmed that uh, the process has started today and that KPMG has been advised for the sale of the UK operation. So that's very important. We'll try to get you some reactions uh, coming in as well. Uh, Grable's uh, deal... Uh, yes, it has been confirmed. They are selling the long products European business to Grable Capital. The value is not known yet, but as I was saying, it's expected to be at least 400 million pounds. In fact, what we understand from our sources is that uh, this will be spread across a period of time and will be... Uh, uh, spread into all the three different businesses that they have. So while we're getting more detail, let me give you a sense about the kind of uh, uh, the kind of expand they have in their Scunthorpe unit. So when you're talking about the Scunthorpe plant, it not only includes the main Scunthorpe business that they have in Scunthorpe, it also includes uh, specific mills in the Teesside area and the Northern France area, and it includes uh, Scunthorpe Steelworks and engineering workshops in Workington as well. We'll get you some more details with respect to the kind of valuation. So that'll be key. And remember, they have about 4,600 employees uh, in the Scunthorpe business. So it's very important to understand exactly what happens to the employees. Uh, we, in fact, have our very own SP Tulsian joining in now. Mr. Tulsian, if you have all the details, so far what we know is that the deal has been signed uh, with Grable's Capital. We don't have the exact valuation yet. But uh, what is your initial sense as to how significant would it be to actually help in Tata Steel deleveraging operations? 
See, Kritik, I don't think that this news is really any anything, you know, exciting. This is very much on the expected line. Hmm. But we must need to understand the broad contours of that, that what has all been the financial deal and more in respect to the labor. Because everyone, if you really see, each side has its own agenda. UK government is interested in securing the job. The potential buyer is interested in technology and maybe the consideration what he's looking. In fact, the, if, if you really go by the uh, grapevine in the in the street, people are even saying that maybe buyer is expecting something from the company or maybe from the state government, maybe as a as a kind of grant or something. And I have always been maintaining that Tata Steel must must get a sizable amount from this. You just can't say that okay, these are all impaired assets and they will cut cut the losses of one million pound, which they Quickly are quickly cut you every... short uh, on that. Uh... They have officially said that the deal has been done at a nominal amount. So they haven't given the exact amount yet. But in terms of what Tata Steel gets, it's uh, all right. The acquisition on Grable's capital side. So Mr. Tulsiyan, on Grable's capital side, they will be investing four hundred million dollars. So there will be an investment package, the consolidated investment package, and that's what I had been pointing out. Uh, it's four hundred million pounds that will be put in by Grable Capital. Now this won't be just the takeover of the plant it will be the entire investment into various aspects of the plant into taking in the employees so what tata steel gets is essentially a very nominal consideration uh, mr tulsi and your reaction as you said you're not expecting a very significant uh, amount actually coming in terms of uh, deleveraging tata steel is this on expected lines and what the market see, see, again, again purchaser is only investing 400 million pound for maybe improvement of the technology because we have exactly. all been yeah, so, so Tata Steel, you know, my, let's let's assume that Tata Steel is just getting one pound for transfer of this entire uh, entire entire plant, which I think is a big is a big negative. Because see, if you really ask the experts, what I have in fact I have been hearing all of them, everyone seems to be confused and everyone wants to be very play very cautious, saying that uh, Tata Steel is not likely to get anything. And even if that happens, hmm. it will be seen as a big positive, which I totally disagree. Which I totally disagree because you just can't say that I have impaired my assets or I have, you know, provided for in the books for all those things. Mm. Because as long as the debt remains into the company from where they will discharge this debt of, of, of huge amount which is still spending in the books of the company to the extent of 80,000 crore. So merely the, you have you, you got rid of a loss-making unit does not mean that this is very positive for Tata Steel. I don't subscribe to this this one. That it, it means that, okay, you have curtailed your losses, but you have significantly, you have imputed a significant value which was perceived to be seen as a, as a significant value by the market all along. So this is, if, 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 if it can be presumed that Tata Steel is not receiving anything, even not even 100 million pound, and that will be, in my view, seen as a big negative. Okay, in fact, uh, let's bring in Chintan Mehta as well. Uh, Chintan, your initial reaction, it's a normal consideration for uh, Tata Steel. As far as Graybulls is concerned, they are investing 400 million, ta million pounds in terms of the overall investment package. Your reaction, the entire sale will go through for a nominal consideration. Yeah, so first of all, there are too many uh, ifs and bats and like uh, nominal amount, what the nominal amount is. Nonetheless, we need to understand that, first of all, they have written down the, all the uh, assets. For this, uh, the, this unit is concerned. This company, uh, this unit was making around thousand or crore loss for a whole year. So you know that that that, that part of thousand crore is a savings uh, which the company won't be, uh, you know, doing it for 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 the years. That's the only positive thing which uh, takes out. We are waiting for the further details as to how how it will go through, how the table will finance it, and who will manage it. So we are waiting those stuff on the management at this point of time. Okay, I'll get Varinder in to put this into perspective as well. But quickly going to Sanjay. Sanjay, you've been tracking this uh, from London for us. Uh, what are you picking up with respect to Rabel's plan? 400 million pounds of an investment package. Uh, do you have any details with respect to how this will work? What is the kind of turnaround that they're looking at? And do we know what happens to the 4,500 employees? Well, the, the deal will have a direct implication also, of course, on the employees. And it seems on the one hand an agreement to cut costs by way of cutting salaries and by way of cutting new commitments to pensions. Of course, the older commitments that, that have been significantly made by Tata will remain in place and Tata cannot walk away from uh, those instantly. On the other hand, we already have an indication from the announcement uh, that came in a few minutes back that they are receiving, Grey Bull is receiving significant support from the governments 
They have publicly thanked the government in Britain and in France. So they are expecting government support. They are expecting to cut, cut costs and to cut new deals with people who are their clients. So both at the level of sourcing uh, the material for production and in selling to clients, they are negotiating new deals. So it is not just one thing. Through several steps on both sides of the equation, they are cutting costs um, and, and hoping that this will bring profitability. All right, uh, Sanjay, just hang in there. Varindar, uh, take us through how significant would this be? As he, uh, as Chintan was pointing out, 1,000 crore rupees yes. of losses. In a sense, we are just seeing Tata Steel cut down their losses, not necessarily bring in additional amount. You know, well, I'll, I'll just place this entire deal into a, into two, three perspectives, okay? Uh, if you're looking at only Tata Steel as a company, uh, the debt, uh, you know, there is no money coming inside uh, to Tata Steel, that doesn't yeah. mean it will help the debt of the company, which was widely expected. You talk to any analyst on the street and they will tell you that they were never expecting that the money will come into Tata Steel as a company. Mm. What they were expecting is that the losses which are there on the books of Tata Steel, which has been going for a while, mm. remember this is the second attempt by Tata Steel you know, in, in order to sell this business. The 1,000 crore losses goes away, which is a good yeah. thing for, for Tata Steel as a company. Now you have to ask yourself or the analyst will be arguing on this factor whether, whether that is priced in or not at yeah. 330. 330 rupees per share. We had Rakesh Arora coming in. He said clearly that you know you could see some positive reaction in the stock, which happened today. The stock was up nearly 3% in in, uh, in the trade today. So you may see you know that people may be having this opportunity to sell on news. You know when the stock opens tomorrow in the morning. Uh, mm. This exercise which which happened with Graybull is clearly to save you know the jobs which were, which were there. There's a big fight which is going in Europe for this. Mm. This saves the jobs which are there uh, you know for 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 this uh, entity four and a half thousand jobs and of course four thousand million infusion which is coming coming in that will help for plant to kick start for the jobs to stay over there for Tata Steel it is a good news it is mm. not a great a news great that news. that will right. reduce the debt but it is not there is no event for them the stock has already run up which is a good thing now let's see you know I suspect profit booking you know when the stock opens in the morning okay let me well, bring Nisha also, uh, there is one important relief rally uh, expect, expected from Tata Steel also uh, because one they second, made I'll have to I'll interrupt you uh, Nisha we have Nick Dakin with us he is the Labour MP for the Scunthorpe County uh, Nick uh, thanks for joining in the Deal has been announced. Grables will be investing 400 million pounds into the Scantho plant. What is your initial reaction? And I want to clarify this with you. Would, would this include the entire employee base going into Grables uh, operations uh, altogether? Uh, Nick, if you can hear me, uh, the deal between Grables and Tata Steel have been signed. You've been supporting this for a very long time. I want to understand what has Grables communicated to you with respect to the turnaround plant and what happens to the employees? All right, I think we've, we've lost Nick on the line. So, Alicia, coming back to you, you've read the Grables uh, press release. Take us to what seems to be the pl plan now as far as the turnaround is concerned, the investment package is concerned, and how much uh, do we have a sense on what Tata Steel gets? So, clearly, it's a stop-loss situation, Kritika, for mm -hmm. Tata Steel. So, at this point, over $7 billion of debt on their books. They cannot really bring down the debt levels with this loss-making unit sale, but what they can do is put a stop-loss so that their balance sheet is not pressured rise further. That's exactly what Tata Steel has done. Also remember, there were political pressures in the UK on Tata Steel as a big and the largest steel operator in the country as well to pull, put in some money to save those, those jobs as well. And that's exactly what Graybull is bringing in. 400 million pounds is going to be invested into that particular unit's construct, which is a loss-making unit, probably turn around uh, that particular company because remember, internationally it's known that Graybull Capital has shown in the past that it can be a turnaround specialist. So that's one of the big advantages that Graybull and even for Rapport Talbot, if um, the other companies come in, that is also going to bring in some benefit, which Tata Steel wasn't able to manage at this point. So two important things here. For Tata Steel, it's going to be a benefit in terms of not really taking forward or taking more losses on account of Scunthrop unit. But on the other hand, I also remember that the UK was worried about the job losses and one steel company really going down under. And therefore, Grable coming in, investing funds into that company is going to save jobs as well. So from both sides, I think it was a sensitive situation which has been managed through this deal. Nonetheless, it is important to note that nobody was expecting 
penny debt coming into or debt reduction coming into the company Tata Steel, which is now grappling with over $7 billion of debt. But remember, this stop loss is also an important thing which will help it have enough cash going forward so that it can service a part of the debt and focus on other such units. So this is not going to be the end of it. Of course, Port Talbot will be another one which will uh, be sold and uh, talks have already begun. UK government is also taking special interest in this particular bit and also remember that there have been several reports and we have also independently yeah. verified that our steel is looking at selling or having some sort of a structuring to bring down the debt in the Netherlands plant which is uh, more profitable compared to all their European operations as well. Something, okay, because I still remember it was Oh, okay. I think we have Sanjay. Uh, in fact, we have some more details coming in. Sanjay, anything that you're ca catching from uh, Grable's capital side specifically? Well, um, they're on the um, um, clearly upbeat about I've looked at it for a while. They believe that this is something they can turn around. And uh, in order to turn around, we know what their pattern has been so far, which they have shared with us and, with, with, and, and publicly, of course which is to, to cut salaries, to cut pensions, and also uh, cut operations to a size that become manageable. Here, they are going to do all of that, get government support, and get better prices by, uh, down the supplier chain, and get better deals with clients. And the clients, know, you know, uh, are in, in quasi-government organizations, such as the railway services here, which are the principal buyers. So it is a combination of government support and pressures down the line that they are looking at uh, with uh, a hope that um, they can turn this around and not just them and uh, their shareholders. A lot of the 400 million pounds, of course, has come by way of bank loans and bank commitments. You know, uh, I wanted to make a small point. You know, I still remember, you know, it was in October 2014 when the first agreement within Tata's and Klesh was there, okay? Yeah. And uh, the market took it very positively. Later on, when it was not held, the market said, you know, nothing is happening and the stock went down. Hmm. This is the second attempt which has been done by Tata Steel. Okay, Nick is here with okay. us. Okay, uh, uh, Nick, uh, if you can hear me clearly now, we kept losing you on the phone line. Your yes, set, what I can, exactly... I can, you, I can hear you. Can you hear me? I can. Yeah, Nick, yeah, my good. first question to you, what have you, what is the communication that Grables has given with respect to the employees and the transformation plan? They're investing £400 million pounds, uh, as an investment package. Do you have any confirmation on how this will break up? No, I haven't at the moment. What I do know is that Grable feel that the workforce at Scunthorpe and the other plants are mm -hmm. an excellent workforce and the management team are a cracking management team. And Grable believes that with their uh, investment and their management turnaround skills, they, the combination of a great workforce, great management team and themselves will turn this business around. Okay, but Nick, uh, just to confirm that, uh, are you saying that all the 4,500 employees of the Skanto plant uh, will be absorbed uh, by Grable's capital? Um, well, we've just had a significant job losses uh, program where 900 jobs have been lost uh, at the Sunport plant. So the Tata themselves have done a significant restructuring, and I would think that that um, is likely to have got the workforce into the right shape hmm. um, to take the business forward. Okay, so just to understand, what is the outstanding pension liability? Because that was a point of contention specifically in the Skanthor plant. What is the outstanding pension liability that the plant uh, uh, is undergoing and is that a part of the deal? Well, I don't know the detail of that. Clearly, um, existing uh, pensioners will uh, have their pensions um, respected. Uh, there okay. will be changes to the future pension arrangements um, that Grable put in place for the workforce. Um, but I'm afraid I can't talk to you about the detail of any of that. You would need to speak to Tata and Grable. Okay, fair enough. But what is the kind of investment that is required? £400 million, pounds, I'm trying to understand how will this be broken across, in what areas, and is this over a time timeline of a couple of months, or is this in one go? Well, I don't know the details of, of what has been announced. Okay, um, I know that the workforce were being uh, briefed over the last hour, which yeah, is quite okay. appropriate, and then the details will be released okay, to from everyone, the including side? myself. Yep. 
All right. From the government side, in that case, Nick, what is the commitment that you have given? And I believe that uh, the government has been closely involved in uh, ensuring that the deal goes through. So what is the commitment that the government has given with respect to taking on the pension liability and ensuring that there is a smooth transition? Uh, I don't know of any details of the government commitments. Um, I know that there are three areas that need clarifying um, before the deal is finalised hmm. and I suspect that that might be one of those areas. Will you be meeting Tata Steel uh, and Grapers to discuss the contours of the deal? Has there been any commitment given by them to you yet? Uh, no, I'm, as I said, they are very appropriately briefing their workforce first okay. and then they will brief uh, everybody else. So uh, in some ways, you know, we can't talk about the details until the details are available. Okay, fair enough. Uh, thank you so much, Nick, uh, for joining in. Varanda, coming back to you, a um, lot of details which are still unclear as to how this will work out. Nick, Nick, take me through the operations. In a sense, what happens now? What kind of, uh, what are the challenges that they'll face while Tata Steel is looking at transitioning this? Well, you know, it's very simple. Tata Steel wanted to get out of this, okay, and yeah. they have done it. Hmm. I've been, it's been 20 months since, you know, these guys were looking to sell this, sell, you know, this unit. There was one attempt which was failed in 2014 yeah. and now it, it is coming back again. I think this agreement is already signed uh, in October 2015 and now the, finally the deal is closing today. Mm. So, you know, it's something which was there. Tata Steel always knew, you know, that they, you know, this, this unit is running into losses. Mm. They will not get money into the company. The debt will not reduce. It will only help the company uh, in order to, you know, run. If someone is pumping money from outside, it will just help the company to run and save some jobs, you know, which are there, which was, which, which is already there. You know, as I said, the, the question you have to ask is whether it is priced in or not, okay? You know, you mm. could see, you know, temporary reaction on the negative side in the morning because uh, the stock was already up today. I still remember it was in October 2015 yeah. when this agreement was signed between Graybull uh, and, and Tata Steel. Most of the brokerages, starting from CLSA, Deutsche Bank, Kotak, have been reading those notes. They clearly said, you know, that if the deal is done, anywhere between 400 to 500 million fund envisioned into this company, mm. the stock, you know, per share value could be anywhere between 20 to 30 rupees per share. Yeah. So that, that stock has been moving up steadily. Four to five rupees up in the morning and then, you know, coming off from days high, it could be a case. But the good thing is that, you know, they are out of it. Okay. Which they wanted to be thousand rupees, uh, thousand crore rupees losses, you know, which which were running into the company. It's an attempt which is now being by, uh, by by Tata Steel and which is very clear to the market that now Tata Steel wants to get out of all the businesses which are running into losses. And that's a big message, I think, which this company is giving. Mr. Tulsiyan, in fact, uh, will you agree with Varinder's point that the market will now take some heart from the fact that uh, at least those 1,000 crore rupee of losses are completely going away and they will be able to now kind of bridge the gaps? See, Kritika, I'm not able to understand the kind of analysis we have all been discussing. Let's let's mm. focus on three points VH, which we have all been discussing with all mm. the experts. Mm. First is capability of Graybull to, to turn it around, number yeah. one. Number two, job security of 4,000 people or maybe 4,800 people, if I want to be precise, 4,400 in UK and 400 in France. And mm. third is the pension liability, whether the uh, UK government has foregone or given any relief on that account. Mm. If you really ask me, I don't think that pension liability can really be foregone. But even if I presume that government may have given a financial, what you call assistance or maybe subsidy kind of things, even if presuming that all three are history for Tata Steel, they are not going to get benefited. Take for instance, I am. I have my 100% faith in Greybull Capital mm. that they will make it a gold-plated mill. You know, from here on, they'll they'll make it highly profitable. Then that will be more heartburn for the Tata Steel investors from here on. Because if Tatas have not been able to turn around or have not been able to operate it profitably for last nine years, what is the point of talking on all three points? Now, that, that, that's that's one. Okay. Second, if you want to analyze the Tata Steel, you need to focus on the Tata Steel financials. Mm -hmm. If you really see standalone, it has a investment of about 55,000 crore, 52,000 crore to be precise, of all its overseas investments, which includes Southeast Asia, which includes Netherlands, which includes UK. Now, mm. nobody is sure that what kind of forego or hit is going to be taken. I'm referring these all financials as on the latest date. So I'm unable to understand the argument which has been given by the experts and the management that mm. the entire, virtually the entire assets have been written off. Take the case of intangibles. Goodwill of 15,000 crore is, uh, is appearing in the consolidated balance sheet. Vis-a-vis yeah. -vis correspondingly, 52,000 crore investment in these overseas subsidiaries are appearing in the standalone balance sheet. 
which either needs to get written off or needs to get discharged by the standalone company. Does Tata Steel India or does maybe Southeast Asia or maybe Netherlands have the capacity to carry on this 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 debt burden? I have my doubts. So I think we are going totally on this one. This is more a social analysis. Of seeing, I, I understand the social impact of that, but as a mm. Tata Steel shareholder, those things are irrelevant to me. Grey bull capacity, job security of 4,400 people, mm. and the pension liability. As a Tata Steel That's... shareholders, they are not relevant to me at all. Okay, That's right, right uh, Mr. Tutsian. But I want to uh, bring one point across. Would you agree with me? Now, of course, it's all irrelevant. Yes, it doesn't mean anything for Tata Steel's balance sheet. They are, have done this. They have gotten off this loss, and they are out of it. What happens to now, Scanthrof? is none of their business but do you agree with me that for way too long a time they held on to these assets and they did not get rid of it which is a dampener for them and whatever little rally is being seen in the, this particular stock price is only and only because they have managed to successfully get rid of one of the units and is very hell bent on fast tracking the rest of the sale process as well see nisha again you know let's let's use the word you have used successful exit from this these assets that is wrong again i have said that 52000 crore debt of this overseas investment mm -hmm. even if i take a ballpark say 15000 crore who is going to take that pain that pain of 15000 crore will looming will be looming large on the indian operations and mind it that they have compromise of their expansions in india also kalinga nagar steel plant recently having come in for 3 million ton they will be having the interest liability and depreciation liability of that as well number 1 number 2 you say that okay the future liabilities have stopped there are many companies you know in which take the case of jet airways when this all crisis was seen jet was making a loss of 2000 crore we have you have, you have never seen naresh goel agreeing to sell his company for 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 peanut or for for 1 rupee because the same argument was put to him 3 years back as well 4 years back as well why don't you exit from a loss making company at that time the banks have been had an exposure of 20000 crore and he was not he got a flesh out of uh, he got a yeah. deal from from atr he got yeah. a deal of 10000 crore yeah. so merely saying that they got read of uh, 1 million 1 million pound of losses per day you you, you can always quantify that you know maybe 3000 crore 4000 crore that's not the this one the, the main the broad contours of the financials of this deal needs to be analyzed in respect to tata steel and not the entire deal i that's agree my, with you mr so just, that's just my hold that hold that thought mr so and we have matt ball from the community union community uh, is the largest trade union that takes Get out all the steel employees are uh, Matt. A pleasure to have you on the show. The one question that all our experts have been asking is, what happens to the employees? Will all the employees that service the Scantha plants and its subsidiaries be absorbed into Grebel after the deal is done? Uh, that that's what we understand it to be. There was a, a restructuring announced within the Long Products business around about six months ago. Okay. Um, Of about 900 jobs that that has been um, consulted on and worked through with the unions over the past six months, we, and that is all part of the transformation plan for the business ahead of it being passed over to to Grable. So we, it's our. Uh, Matt, Matt, can you hear me now? I think we've lost Matt on the. Uh... phone line but there is one clarity that uh, they have at least trade unions have been assured that uh, employees will be coming in uh, nisha you've been tracking this as well they have cut down cut down their losses to an extent the employee uh, count has now gone down to about 4400 if i'm correct what happens to the liability because that is the one question is it kind of certain that obviously tata steel will not have to bear the liability it's either the new owners or is it the uk government no that's not clear in fact a lot of analysts are raising this particular bit and it's still not clear and we will wait for tata steel management to really come in and clarify one bit how much of that pension liability and remember just some time back tata steel had made several efforts went through the whole uh, long uh, process of uh, uh, really bringing down the pension liabilities on account of the uk workers and has brought it down to some extent but pension liability is a huge overhang coming in from the european operations for tata steel and most of the analysts at this point are really deliberating on how much of that pension liability stays with tata steel on its balance sheet and how much is taken over by the new entrant now remember grable capital is one of the only buyers which had come into the fray after clash group deal did not work out for tata steel 
Looking at the MA space, uh, there yeah. could be a desperate situation for Tata Steel, clearly, and therefore, Grable, Grable would have really um, uh, written the clauses according to some of the liabilities going to Tata Steel. So, this is just an assumption at this point. Yeah. But most analysts and the market will watch, will watch out for the liability on account of pension that is going to remain on the balance sheet of Tata Steel, and that could be an overhang going forward as well. Okay, let's uh, pose that question. We have Matt back with us. Uh, Matt, uh, if you can hear me clearly now. Um, yes, I can, I yeah. want to understand exactly what happens with the pension liability because, uh, A, if you have a sense, you've been talking uh, to Tata Steel, you've been communicating with the UK government. What is the exact pension liability that the Scunthorpe uh, unit sees and will that be absorbed by Grey Bulls? Well, the, uh, there are still discussions ongoing about the, about the pension scheme um, at the moment, but what will happen in terms of uh, the existing employees, they will, they will all become deferred members of the, the British Steel pension scheme when, once they transfer over to Grable, and, and they would be in a, a new defined contribution scheme. So, um, so their existing um, the pensions that they have earned up to this point um, will uh, remain within the British Steel pension scheme. Uh, it won't transfer over to, to Grable. There okay. will be a new scheme. You mentioned a new scheme and a deferred scheme that will be taken up by the UK government. So, if I'm correct, this will be taken up by the UK government and not the erstwhile owners, that is Tata Steel. Well, they, that position isn't isn't clear at, at the moment. There's been, I, we understand there has been some dialogue between Tata and the government, but there's no definitive mm -hmm. position. And from the the trade union perspective, this is this this is still speculation. We haven't had uh, formal consultation with either Tata Steel or the government about what will happen to the pension scheme. The only thing we know for definite is that there will be a new scheme with for employees scheme. who transfer to Grable Cap Capital. Okay, can you give us give us a clarity on exactly how many employees uh, were a part of uh, Scunthorpe Plant and their subsidiaries? Um, so there's uh, around about four four thousand four hundred employees who are who will be transferring over as part of this deal. Okay, so that's an important confirmation coming in. I also want to understand what are what is the plan with respect to nationalisation of that unit on cars because that is something that, uh, in fact, the Scunthorpe MP had also indicated. But uh, is that a conversation that is on ongoing as well? No, we, we don't believe it should be ruled out as an option, uh, mm. but uh, at the moment we, we would rather that a uh, new investor comes forward and who wants to take on the business, invest in it and, and make it a success. So um, nationalisation is only an option if, if we believe that there's a risk that steel making and steel production will, will cease. But at at the moment, there's no indication of that, that happening. So everybody's working towards completing the grey ball deal and then also finding another investor for the remainder of Tata Steel's business in the UK. All right. What is the status with respect to negotiations with the UK government? I believe that uh, Roy Rikis uh, was in India to meet the Tata Steel management. Uh, what is the conversation that you've had? Or what is the update with respect to the conversation with Tata Steel on the sale of the remaining business? Well, they... They've given a commitment to the UK government that they will allow a reasonable time for a sale to take place. We don't have exact clarity on, on how long that, that time frame will be, but we're encouraged by the fact that they've said that they will act responsibly uh, and uh, allow time for other investors to look at the business and, and uh, do a deal to, to take it over. Uh, the UK government, uh, in fact, Matt, has also been indicating at various points that they will step in with respect to pension liabilities across the board. Is there any conversation that you've had uh, with the UK government with respect to the pension liabilities? No, we've had no conversations about the, the, the pension liabilities. That That's uh, a separate issue. It's probably too early for that to be discussed at the moment, um, given that uh, the formal sales process hasn't yet started. 
All right, fair enough. And uh, last quick question. I believe that uh, Sajid Javed has had a conversation with community members uh, and this has been taken up directly with the UK government. What is the timeline looking like? Uh, there is obviously no hurry with respect to the sale, but can you give us a sense of what the government has assured you on ensuring that all the 15,000 employees of Tata Steel uh, are transferred or transitioned in a seamless manner? Well, the government said that they will do everything in their in their powers to enable that to happen. They they haven't given us a specific time frame uh, either, but they they have received assurances from Tata Steel that uh, a reasonable amount of time will be allowed for for the pro the whole process to take place. All right, Matt, uh, appreciate you joining in on the show. Thank you so much for speaking to us. In fact, uh, an important clarity coming in, Varinder. Uh, there has been a release by Tata Steel indicating that the sale will be an exchange for Grable Capital taking on the whole of the business, including assets and relevant liabilities and securing an appropriate funding package. So clearly the pension liability will be a part of it and the entire asset will go in. Is that over and above the fact that this will bring down cash bond, the fact that the liabilities are going in, that gives some heart, of course. So, you know, if, if the release is saying that, you know, all the liabilities will also go along with the sale, you know, that means clearly, you know, the cash burn is saved for Tata yeah. Steel, which is a good thing. So that means if I'm, you know, in a simple English, I'm saying that uh, if the pension liability is also going to Grey Bull hmm. instead of Tata Steel, as you're suggesting, you know, from the release, what, is, what has come in, you know, that will mean that, uh, you know, the 1,000 crore cash burn is being saved uh, by the company, Tata still doesn't have to pay more interest on the debt and they're just out of this business saving some of the jobs which are there and of course 1000 crore of losses which the company used to do, which is a good thing. Mm -hmm. I've been seeing the same thing and I will say it again, you know, you have to answer and see whether 330 that is priced in or not, the mm -hmm. stock was already up. Yeah. So, you know, if the liabilities are going, money is saving, it might see a positive reaction of a few rupees in the morning. But then because, you know, the overall global scenario is not that great, you mm -hmm. could see, you know, people selling at higher levels. Okay, Nisha, you know, uh, should we now make our peace with the fact that this is going to be the case across the board because there are multiple sales that will happen in parts, bit by bit. Uh, should we now, or should the market uh, make the peace with the fact that it will be more of bringing down losses, cutting down the losses, rather than actually bringing in fresh capital and cutting down debt? Actually, Kritika, that's the first step towards servicing yeah. the debt pile as well. So over $7 billion of debt pile, and if losses also come in, that is additional pressure for the company. So once the loss-making units are out of the company's operations and business and doesn't put as much uh, pressure on the balance sheet, then the company can clearly focus on servicing the debt pile. But uh, of course, uh, one uh, deal is done with Grey Bull. Port Talbot is another loss making unit for which Liberty House is already in fray. Sanjeev Gupta, the founder of Liberty House, has told us that he will be putting in his bids. He has a plan which will turn around that company and uh, will be infusing cash which Tata Steel cannot. So that deal is also imminent that could go through for Tata Steel. And uh, if that happens, another stop loss. But looking at the other unit, that is Netherlands based unit, which is a better unit unit for Tata Steel in European businesses. If they do, as has been reported, and we have also verified that Tata Steel is in advanced talks with our German steel maker Thyssen Group to really have a joint venture with uh, its Netherlands units and, and make use of the synergies and park some part of their large debt pile onto that jo joint venture partnership and probably do an IPO later to get in some equity infusion. That sounds like a structure that can really work out in bringing down the overall debt from uh, the present scenario and also remember that Indian operations in steel is also doing far better than what it was doing earlier so the pressure clearly going off Tata Steel's balance sheets but clearly it's not out of the woods as yet Kritika. I think there are a lot of grey areas still if you're talking about only yeah. this deal as Mr. Tulsan have been pointing you know what happens to the investment what happens to the goodwill consideration you know whether the line what you mentioned it actually includes the entire pension liability or not so there are a lot of grey areas yeah. which are there so I don't think it will be wise to just pass on a judgment right now. You know, let us, you know, read more contours, you know, hear more from Tata Steel yeah. and Grey Bull. Yeah. But as of now, what the what what the deal explains us is that, you know, uh, Tata Steel benefits from the losses going away, the jobs are saved, which was the attempt which was done earlier and is now sealed today. We don't know what's the exact liability on Scunthorpe, do we? 
No, not really. It's and not even really. even the piecemeal law, laws coming on exactly. account of only Scunthorpe is also not known. Exactly. So uh, we just have a ballpark figure of uh, the losses coming in from the European operations. So yes. yeah, that's a grey area uh, really coming in for uh, Tata Steel. <laughs> a lot of questions to be answered lot by Tata questions. Steel. A uh, lot of grey areas, a lot of uh, fine print that we need to bring it. But yes, uh, some clarity that uh, the entire business will be uh, given completely by Tata Steel to Grables. Grables will take on the liability assets in the entire Scunthorpe plant at a 400 million pound uh, investment package with nominal consideration coming to Tata Steel. We'll get you more analysis uh, through the day, but uh, let's take a short break on that note. We will continue our coverage on this deal and many other stories after the break. Stay tuned.